The changes in South Africa have shown our country's ability to overcome incredible difficulties. We built the kind of political institutions that creates an environment to respond to the variety of ambitions that represents our desire to move away from the legacy of apartheid. And this is an incredible success that we must celebrate. The danger, however, is that we've not been able to translate this political success into economic achievement. And so what we see today is that in many parts of our country, the legacy and the features of apartheid still exist side by side by the incredible achievements that we have made. And even though we're moving in the right direction, we've seen that the global economic crisis has impacted on the ability of South Africa to be able to move more speedily to the great objectives we set for ourselves. In this context of addressing the background and moving towards the kind of future we desire, retirement funds are an essential part. If we look at what the difficulties are in respect of retirement funds, we see that the absence of a clear social economic framework that guides retirement funds has led to many difficulties. Our savings are not secure. The management of those savings are subject to many dubious practices, including, in many instances, unethical fund managers. But the kind of economic literacy that's required from our people to respond to these difficulties means that we've got to find new ways of engaging in these areas. But retirement funds, in any event, represents the opportunity for people to cater for their twilight years, to make sure that after a life of sweat and toil, that they're able to enjoy their retirement and still take care of the many needs that they do have as they respond to that. But so, as we look at retirement funds, we must understand that its ability to contribute to our people is hamstrung by the present environment. An unemployment level of close on to 40% that caused incredible difficulties on the social fabric of our society. In that context, income levels are not secured. And we have seen that many of the areas that are supposed to demonstrate how we can respond to the needs of people into the future are challenged by that. As South Africans, we have to together respond to the social crisis and the social injury that affects so many of our people. We have to take the principle of solidarity that's peculiar to benefit funds and ensure that we extend that to everyone. But the extension of that solidarity, the commitment to bring all people into the social security and retirement safety net, should be something we do not out of charity, but because we know it's the surest way that we're able to undo many of the difficulties that exist in our society. We know that in South Africa, the challenges around the economy and the social challenges that exist is partly systemic. And so we've got to find a way to respond to that that puts the country in all of its use in the position where they're able to advance to all of the features that we've set for ourselves. But this means that we must draw a distinction between the facts that it's important to have economic growth. But economic growth cannot be the only measure of your success. And so the GDP numbers that are up is an important indicator, but it can't be the only indicator. The measure of our success must be how we're able to extend prosperity and opportunity to every willing heart across the length and breadth of our country. And that's the challenges that exist for us. That's the challenges and that's the difficulties that we have to find in defining the regulations for retirement fund that mitigates these challenges. And so the figures that are often displayed to us by economists that details the decline of many of the economic features has got to be responded to differently. Because even though we can't measure as tangibly the loss of hope in so many of our communities, it is a factor that we must take account of and it's a factor that we must respond to. Because at the moment, everybody who spent their lives working to save for their retirement benefits will probably at best earn about 30% of the income they receive at the moment. And that decline in income will not only mean that their life circumstances and livelihoods would be more pressured, but it will also contribute to pressure in those communities and part of the society that they supported. And so for that reason, it's absolutely essential that we respond to retirement funds differently and that we make it all of our responsibility. We know, we have seen in South Africa, that united action is the best way for us to proceed. And so out of this conference, we must find a way to define the best regulations, the best environment that shapes an agenda to make sure that the benefits that we've set as a goal are achieved, that the conduct of the funds, the management and the investment choices are made both out of ethics, but also sound reason. We've seen in South Africa that the market can play an incredible role in generating wealth. But we've also seen that the market's been unable to distribute that wealth equitably, nor has it been able to stop many of the unethical practices of so many fund managers that has ripped off the savings of poor people. And so what has to come out of this conference is that we put in place regulations that respond to this environment dif differently. 
because ultimately when we look at retirement funds we understand that these are savings of people and it has to be invested strategically for their future but this is also savings of the nation and the savings of the nation must be deployed in the best interest of the nation and so there's nearly an obligation to make sure that we're able to tie together the interest of individual fund and policy holders with the general and the aggregate interest of our communities and the only way to achieve that is to make sure we put in place the regulations that forces the funds in many respects to work together with the new growth prospects that exist for our society and it's that partnership that must make sure that where we invest our funds leads to more job creation, leads to more opportunities for our people. Because ultimately, it's important for us to make sure that the savings improve the lives of people who have planned for their retirement, but it's also ensure, important to ensure that the savings of our nation is used to grow the economy, to extend prosperity to everyone, and to make sure that we're able to respond differently to the challenges. And so as we come here today, it's to make sure that we again give expression to that sense of solidarity that's been the cornerstone of rebuilding our nation and making sure that we respond to the ambitions of society. It's about making sure that the sense of solidarity gives expression to our private virtues, those things that reside in our hearts that make us good people, and ensure that that sense of goodness is turned into public policy so that the way that we manage the funds, the interest that it serves, responds to the interest and the needs of our society. Because ultimately, that's the only way that we can proceed, and that's the only way that we can guarantee the best interest of our people. But how do we do that? Unless we're able to make sure that government comes and acts in support of the partnership between the private and the public interest, that we're able to ensure that a ministry, a dedicated political authority that gives the importance of savings and the importance of wealth generation within the society, the standing that it requires in the society, we're not going to make the kind of advances that we hope for ourselves. So this conference is an important moment for us to come together and to make sure that we respond to those challenges better. And so we've come here today because we've put hope over fear. We've put confrontation behind the need for us to cooperate. But that cooperation must be designed to make, it, to make sure that we give expression to the better nature of our people. The fact that when we save for one person, we must save for all. Because it's that sense of commonality that's got to be brought together in the interest of savings and in the interest of retirement funds. Because ultimately it demonstrates one of the greatest virtues of our nation, that sense of solidarity that, that's, that is at the cornerstone of all of our successes, both politically but also economically. And so this conference is tasked with not only committing to that, but making sure that the political pressure abounds to bring government to the realization that the ministry is the only way forward.